Hi, I'm Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics. Today I'm going to teach you how to make a self-binding receiving blanket. What new mom or expectant mom wouldn't love to have a receiving blanket? It makes a wonderful baby shower gift and it's super easy and fun to do. Now today we'll be using the Little Ones 2 collection by Kimberbell Designs from Maywood Studio. I love Maywood's fabrics and as you notice there's other projects as well, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you don't miss any of our videos and also links to products, uh, links to certain um, parts of our website are in the description below. Now the bib will be recorded in a separate video. We'll be covering the, re the receiving blanket today. Two fabrics are all you need. The fabric that represents the border and the miter corner is the same as the backing. So for your backing fabric that wraps around to the front and is your border in your corners, you want 40 inches. And for your top fabric, you'll want 30 inches. I'll be using some wonder clips today. The first thing that I like to do whenever I'm making the receiving blanket is I want to find my center on all four sides of both pieces of fabric. And to do that, we'll simply just fold our fabric in half. And consequently, I didn't pre-wash these fabrics. So if you're wondering about that, that's really your discretion. Um, I often don't pre-wash my fabrics these days. I did as an early quilter, and now I find that the, the caliber of the fabric today is so fantastic that I really don't um, necessarily pre-wash my fabrics unless I'm concerned about maybe some color running, and that is just not a factor with these high caliber quality fabrics from Maywood Studio. I went ahead and I'm using the mini clips today. I like using the mini clips to mark my center instead of a pin because sometimes when I mark this, my centers with pins and I'm moving my fabric back and forth to my sewing machine, they either catch on my clothes or I get poked. Maybe I'm, you know, you know, that's not fun either and little spots of blood here and there. So just use the wonder clips if you have them. And again, these are the mini clips and I like the colorful ones. I just like color, of course. I have all of my, my sides marked now and I'm going to flip the top piece over and I'll be using a Creative Grids 2.5 by 6.5 inch ruler. I love the little rulers. I just, you know, of course we always have our big 6 by 24 inch ruler to cut strips, but when you're trying to get into smaller sections, as you can see, this is already taking up a big part of my workspace. I don't need a big chunky ruler out here too, especially when all I'll be doing is marking a few places here. Since we have a miter corner over here, I will be marking a, a box in the corner. And I want to show you the ruler here, the Creative Grids ruler. Here's my quarter inch here and my quarter inch here. I'll be sliding that ruler over to that corner I'll be using a friction pen. I love my friction pen because if you've seen any of my videos, you know that the friction pen will simply go away, disappear with a hot iron or in your dryer. So I love knowing that if I mismark something or maybe I'm doing embroidery, if I draw this on, I can just make it disappear with some heat. Now I've already marked the other four corners. The other thing we'll want to do with our two and a half by six and a half inch, pick whatever side you want and you'll simply lay the ruler down and you'll mark nice and bold. This will be the opening when we get ready to turn um, the project, turn it through to the right side. Um, so I have that marked nice and bold so that I know that I'll be definitely stopping here and of course reinforcing. I want to mention that right now. We've marked our four corners. When we begin to sew these layers together, we'll make sure that we reinforce starting backing up and we call it back tacking. And then we'll come and again, make sure that when we get to our opening, we'll stop back tack and again, start here, back tack and again, back tack. So let's, let's go ahead Consequently, just make sure your opening's not in the corner. Doesn't matter what side it's on, it doesn't have any bearing on the project whatsoever. So we're going to bring our backing, backing and our top together and we'll simply line those wonder clips up together. Let me move this over so you can see that. We'll simply line that up, make sure the one is stacked right on top of the other. I'm going to move that wonder clip away and I will go ahead and just join that up. All right, 
and I've got my magnetic pin cushions. I love these pin cushions. I love how when I, you know, spill my pins, I can just clean them all up and they're all lined up and I can, there's a space for my finger to grab those pins. I absolutely love these new pin cushions from Clover. I'm going to go ahead and I'll pin that side. I'm just going to do that quickly because I want to show you the other side as well. And as you can imagine, quarter inch seam is what we'll be using today. And I'm using a masterpiece thread. It's 100% cotton, especially when this is around your baby. Use good quality cotton fabric. Um, I don't really want to use a polyester thread when I'm dealing with cotton fabric. And of course, whenever I'm making projects, I'm using cotton thread so or cotton fabric. So I like to use cotton thread consistently. And masterpiece is 100% cotton. I've went ahead, I can even move that clip right now since it's all stacked together. I'll put a pin right there. I went ahead and pinned that side. We're gonna repeat that. I'm gonna just turn this around. And you'll simply bring this side up. I know this seems crazy. You're thinking, how is this gonna work? Stay with me, you're gonna be amazed just how beautifully this works. And it's fun, it's so much fun. I wanna make more and more of these. They make great gifts. Stack your wonder clips together, together again. Simply remove that one, joining the other. Okay. All right. As you can see with me kind of shifting this around, that wonder clip just makes such a nice, it's a, it's, I can visually catch it quickly. Right there is my spot, and we'll keep pinning. As I mentioned before, we will be taking that to the sewing machine, and it's very important that you reinforce the beginning back tack. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna actually probably start on that side that has that opening, because I don't, how many times have I gently like mark an opening, and I sewed right through it, and I have no way to sew, turn the project through. I have done that on more than one occasion. So I, I'm gonna start over here. I wanna get that taken care of. I don't want that weighing on my mind. Don't forget, don't close up that opening. So whenever I, whenever I have to make sure that I'm starting and stopping at a very specific point, I hand crank the machine versus hoping that that needle will start in the proper down position. My needle is going just a breath, it's actually going right through that corner. And I'm gonna keep my needle in that down position. Actually, let's do that right there. That way when my needle stops down here at the other end, it will stop in the down position. So let's start slowly. We're gonna go back, making sure we don't go further back than where we started. A quarter inch seam, here we go. Okay, great. So now, whew, I got the opening taken care of. And of course, we will simply come to the other side and reinforcing in the beginning, reinforcing the end, quarter inch seam allowance. When I come back, that side will be done. I'll take you to the other two sides of the blanket. Okay, two sides down. All right, now this next step is similarly not necessarily intuitive. You think, how is this gonna work? Um, it reminds me of the Magic Pillowcase um, project. If you've never done that one, that's another really fun one. I encourage you to watch that one. Another practical, useful uh, you know, video. Who doesn't need another pillowcase? Especially it's fun if you're sending kids off to camp. But this is like that. You're like, how is this gonna work? Stay with me, it's so cool, it's so fun. So we've got those two sides done. Let's bring up the one side, stacking just like we did before. This isn't new, We're, we already did that two other times. Move that clip and we'll go ahead and pin. And now you'll see how you have these little puppy ears out here almost. It looks a little funny. So we'll just pin. In fact, I'll just describe to you because it's nothing different. So just pinning. Remember that corner that we didn't sew all the way to the end? That's why this is possible. So let me just show you what that looks like pinned. That little edge right there. 
I should have actually probably started. I pinned in the middle where they were joined and, and should have started here. But you see, that's why it works. And then we'll pin right there in the gap. And then down here, the same. We're just going to simply pin. I can just show you what that's going to look like down on this end. Again, you've got your little flap open because you left your quarter inch. Um, you stopped a quarter inch away from that corner. So that's why that's possible. Now, just like before, and making sure that our flap is out of the way. Now, I would, of course, pin more a little bit, a couple, couple more times down here. Let's just do a couple more. There we go. Um, that's a lot of bulk here. So trying, you know, instead of trying to feed that through, I'm just going to come in from the side and I want to make sure that that backing that's kind of starting to come around to the front is out of the way. Everything is out of the way so I don't get a tuck. So I'm going to smooth that out very carefully. And I can feel there's no bump under there. So I know I'm in the clear to go ahead. Just like before, I will bring that needle down to where I, by hand, hand crank that. And when I know I'm in a good spot, I'll begin to sew forward and then back. And then all the way down to that uh, corner here, reinforce that where you end. And you're going to simply do the same thing on the other side. When I come back, we'll take you to the next step. I have all four corners sewn and I want to show you what this looks like. So if yours looks like this and you're thinking, how, Jen, is this going to work? It should look like this. And that's normal. You've got your four little puppy ears out here. All right, miter corners. Now we need to work on our miter corners. Um, this is where you'll use your two and a half by six and a half inch ruler again, as well as your friction pen. And you'll repeat the same process in all four corners. So this is your polka dot. This is your backing. That's your top fabric. We will turn those two sides to be together. Just like that. You saw me do that. And we're just going to smooth those fabrics out. A little bit lumpy, isn't it? There we go. Now, don't worry. When I made my my blanket, um, these did not line up, and I thought, uh oh, seam ripping time. Nope. Don't even just put that seam ripper down and back away and say thank you, Jen, because you don't need to worry about that. All you need to do right now, this is all going to be cut away anyway. And remember, guys, it's a blanket. We're not going to wear this thing. It's a blanket, so it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Just stack those two, grab your ruler, and you can see, in fact, let me scoot this out so the overhead camera can see better. I'm going to, I have a, a nice line, plenty of lines here on this Creative Grids ruler. I'm trying to create a 90 degree corner. So I'm parallel here, and I'm looking where my stitches ended. So, I want, I'm looking to go create that 90 degree corner right there where I'm parallel with this and I'm coming right at the edge of that where I finished my stitching. It should not look like this. See how that's not parallel with this. That should not look like that. These, this should be running parallel here and you're crossing just where you were and I'm going to draw a line right there. I to draw it real nice and bold and I'm going to pin that. I don't want that to move when I'm bringing that to my sewing machine. So let's go ahead and just gently scoot that over. This is a straight stitch. I can start right off my fabric and sew onto it. I don't need to reinforce necessarily here I probably will out of habit <laughs> and definitely I want to reinforce down here okay we'll take our pins out we'll use our 
wonderful ruler again line that up on a quarter inch and go ahead and just trim that away you have a little bit of a triangle there maybe you can put in your stash we're going to go ahead off camera and repeat those corners i want to show you one more time though so let's just grab another corner we'll do that off camera but for me, it's always like, how did she do that again? So rather than you having to back up that video, let me just show you one more time. I'm going to make it so that, that that kind of tuck is toward me. So I have folding those together, stacking those for a good long distance. So that way you know those are truly stacked on top of each other. So this time that corner kind of laid on top of each other better. Great. It's still going to get trimmed away, so it's not that big of a deal. I'm going to go ahead. There's my stopping point. So I want my ruler at least going, going right there. And I'm making sure that this is, let me scoot it out again, that that is parallel. Not like this, not like that. Parallel and running right through that point. I'll go ahead and draw my line, put my pins in, take it to my sewing machine. So reinforcing at the end and then trimming away. So I'll go ahead and finish that up with those other corners and then we'll be back to finish up our blanket. I have my four corners already taken care of and now the best part of all is getting ready to turn everything through to see what we created. I like to grab in those corners and let's just start there. Oh my gosh, who wouldn't just love to get this as a baby shower gift? Yeah, up in Idaho, it's cold up here. Um, so I made this in flannel. In fact, one of the gals here at, Sh at Shabby Fabrics is pregnant. So this, psh, this is her baby shower gift. <laughs> that and some, and she's having a boy. Um, but of course, let's say you're in a warm climate area. This will work great with cotton fabrics too. You don't need the flannel. I just chose it because we're, we're pretty cold up here for a good part of the year. So go ahead and turn everything all the way through. And this is where I love this Dritz seam creaser and point turner. And I just get in there gently, because you could definitely poke through there, and just poke everything out so it gets out. And we'll go do that in all four corners. I have my iron heating up. Then I'll show you how to close that opening. I think sometimes in our fast-paced world that people really appreciate a handmade gift because it's far and fewer between. Um, I know when my mom, when I was little, it was, it was pretty common to be given handmade gifts and now it's not so common anymore. So look how cute this is. Just look how adorable this is. So simply take that to your pressing mat at this point and we're just going to press that out. And I can feel that seam want to go in this direction. And I'm just going to help that along a little bit. I can feel that just wants to go in that direction, which is great. And we'll go ahead and press that through. Now, rather than take the time to do that on camera, I do want you to make that have that seam encouraging it toward the outside. So what to do about this opening? Well, I'll tell you, it's really, really fun. I have very few instances where I can use the decorative stitches on my sewing machine because I'm a quilter and some, we're basically sewing a quarter inch seam allowance. Well, what we've done on our quilts here to close the opening is we've chosen some decorative stitches. And if you want to choose a thread that'll maybe stand out versus blend in, you could do that as well. And now watch how, in fact, let me bring this more center. I don't even necessarily need to really sew this on camera more than I want to actually, I want to show you this opening that I want you to see how the fabric, the top fabric, let me just trim that little th thread away. That top, that top fabric is just lying nice and flat. It's this fabric here that just you can see your line, how it's naturally flowing. You'll just tuck that and let it just continue. Now I'm going to go ahead and I might, I, I want, I want that visual line to not change. So I might just fuss with that just a little bit. There we go. 
and I'm definitely, definitely going to pin that area because I don't want to forget where that is. In fact, I'm going to mark it even a little bit different just to help remind myself these are, this is my opening. So we simply, as I said, we, you could choose a cute zigzag and you'll simply stitch here catching the outer portion to the main fabric and you'll simply close that here all the way around all four sides and that's all there is to making this adorable receiving blanket so if you haven't already subscribed please do it now if you learned something today i'd love to get a thumbs up from you and of course we love comments here at shabby fabrics thanks for watching